Hi, this is Alexandra with Beta Holik here to show you how to make a dream catcher hoop. And for this project, you will need 16 gauge silver plated craft wire, three millimeter microfiber faux suede. We're going to use a blue for ours and some cream colored wax linen. Now all these tools make it a little easier, but they're really not that necessary. We're going to use some heavy gauge wire cutters to go ahead and cut our wire. You'll see that I've made two different sizes. This is more of a Christmas tree size ornament and more of a, a window ornament. Um, and we're going to do this size for the video. So it takes about two and a half rounds or three feet of wire for the larger size. So I'm going to cut that. For the smaller, it takes more like a, about a foot and a half. All right, so once we figure out the size we want our loop, this wire is great because it really keeps its shape, actually. Um, we're gonna take the top portion of about three inches of wire and create a 90 degree angle coming off the top. And with the other side, I'm gonna hook the wire around the base and use some pliers to help myself get a grip here. And just bend it so that it latches on there. I'm gonna do kind of an informal wire wrap just to get a, get a grip. Once that's around, I'm tighten it a bit and clip. And then off the top, I'm going to do another full wire wrap. Just fill that space between and clip again with my heavy gauge cutters. Now it's where I can correct and tighten it up. So once I'm satisfied with the shape and size of my wrap and my hoop, I'm going to go over here to my whack it wire hardener. This is just two pieces of plastic put together and with a rubber mallet I'm going to tap along the rim of the wire and harden it up just a bit so it keeps its shape. Not a whole lot, just enough to stiffen it. A little bit. Again, that's that's optional. You don't really have to do that. So now I'm ready with my base. I'm going to go ahead and cut my suede. For this size, I'm going to use about four feet. This gets tied at the top of that wrap and coiled all the way around the frame. So I've got my 15 inch ruler, I'm going to measure five feet, three, four, five. To get this started off, either I could take the end with about a one inch tip and clip with a little binder clip, or I could go ahead and tie it once around, which I think I'll do. I 
get it started. You'll see that my tie is gonna cover up that wrap a bit, so don't have to worry too much about the aesthetics of our top wrap. It's functional more than anything. All right, so now I'm ready to begin my coiling. It's a lot of leather to, full leather to wield here. It gets a little tangled on stuff, so I like to just bunch it up in my hand to start and bring it through in a lump. And the farther we go, the easier it'll be to wield it. I'm gonna create a nice tight wrap all the way around. See if I don't keep it bunched, it kinda tangles. <laughs> I'll collect it again here. And if it loosens, you can always correct it. That's something you'll want to go back and do anyway as you go. There we go. And get into a rhythm with it. Actually, not having to pull it through every time, it's um, as long as you have enough play along the front end, that should work pretty well. So I'm going to go all the way around and tie it at the end. All right, so having finished off the top portion, I'm ready to start the web in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and cut five feet of my wax linen. And it's a bit to manage at first. So what I'll do is, once I've tied my simple overhand knot at the top, I'll wind the rest together. Two. Wax linen is great because it tucks back on itself, it sticks, so it holds shape really well. I'm going to wind it into a bunch that I'll be able to tuck between my wraps as I weave. All right. So getting a nice, tight, close start is important. I'm going to go ahead and pull a length across like so and measure probably about a fifth, fifth of the hoop. So if I come over like so, I can tuck it in between the faux leather. Make sure it's nice and tight. Hold my tension there and tuck the extra through. Pull my tension again, get a nice grip, and down. I want to make sure I'm going in the same over-under pattern, so I'm over now. Tucking between, keeping the tension, and looping through. It's not quite as tight as I would like, so I need to pull and hold. There we go. Another fifth of the length. Tuck between, over, under, and through. tension. Over, under, and through. 
actually count the coils of the suede around the edge if you want to be real accurate and meticulous about this. That's what I did for these. But for the purposes of the video, I eyed it pretty well there. That's the fifth one, so we're going to come around to finish that off. Go ahead and tie off that first layer. Do we have an even starting point for our second one? So I've come up to the end of my first round, and what I want to do at this point is start to add on the beads. Now, these are beads that I know are going to complement what I'm hanging from the bottom when we do our embellishment. That's Wax linen is good for stringing beads too because it's stiff and resilient. All right, I'm going to wind that back up and start my second rotation here. And so off of that first one, what I do is go just to the middle of my original length. And again, I'm going to go over, under, and through. Check my tension there. Not quite tight enough. I'm going to add my next beads. Collect my cord. and so forth. I'm going to go around and then I'm going to start in the center of each consecutive row, leaving enough room in the middle to add our focal charm. So I'll get back with you once I have finished weaving my beads in. Okay, so I've finished my first, second, and most of my third weaves and I'm going to come around to finish it up. Now these beads travel loosely on here enough to where you can actually start to separate them out as you weave around. And you'll notice what I've done is bring the wood away from the glass. So it's a fun um, kind of adventure to discover where you can separate those beads into different segments changes the design in ways you wouldn't expect. So it looks like my finishing point's going to be right up there. And then from between these two sections is where I'm going to hang my charm. So I'm going to leave the right amount of space there with my knot. Leave it, bring it up to that section. There's a lot of um, artistic license with these. There are very creative ways that you can um, begin to weave different moons and different styles of weaving. A crescent moon, like where you just cover a portion. Lots of different things to try. Just let me get this nice and tight. tension right there. Get the extra out, figure out where I am. Grip and pull. I'm going to go ahead and cut this extra off because it's in my way now. And this is just a 
matter of creating a sturdy, simple overhand knot. Go around once. And twice. So at this point I'm ready to add my pretty Tira cast snowflake charm. What I discovered was that the way that the, wo the woven center ended up was requiring that I get creative on how to have the charm hang centered. So what I did to problem solve was I added a wire wrapped bead and a smaller size jump ring. So I'm just going to go ahead and attach that. And this way it will hang better than before. It's important with dream catchers to leave the center portion open and not weave or bead all the way to the center because the lore of it is that that's where the dream is passed through. So here we go. Now, um, please be sure to see our video on how to embellish a dream catcher hoop where we add these beautiful elements along with some of this type of embellishment cord. Thanks for watching.